You're listening to Out of the Box with Rosie Tran. Out of the Box is sponsored by HugMeTease.com. Spread love, give a hug, HugMeTease.com. Guys, we are now on SoundCloud. Go on OutoftheBoxPodcast.com and follow all of our links. We have SoundCloud, we have Stitcher, we have iTunes. We're on everything. So go on and leave a positive comment. I am very sad because our positive comments have plateaued off and now we're not getting any. Um, We haven't gotten any in a a little while, so that makes me sad. But I have been getting positive emails, which are awesome, except for they don't do anything. So go on iTunes.com, Out of the Box Podcast, and leave it there as a comment. And that actually helps us to get pushed up higher in the rankings and more people can find us and like us and listen to us. So that helps me out more than a positive email. I am excited today to have a very funny comedian. He was the 2012 winner of the Shorty Awards for Comedian and also has a new album out on Amazon called Hater, Matt Walker. Woo! Hello, Rosie. How are you? You can talk I'm now. Good. I can talk now. <laughs> it's a very NPR intro. It was. It sounds very NPR. I was like, I was don't like, That's cool. talk. I will leave you a positive comment, Rosie. Oh my gosh, Matt. You're I, so when I get When I get home tonight, I'm going to go on. I'm going to find you on Stitcher. Are you going to leave a positive talk. comment about yourself? Like, oh my God, Matt Walker was so No, no, so I'm, I'm just going to leave a positive comment about the show. <laughs> Yay. See, see how nice my guests are, guys? You They're asked so... nicely, and I was like, how can I say no? Oh, that's so sweet. Well, after being attacked by my dog, you... Yes. <laughs> um, so I'm excited because you have released your debut comedy album mm-hmm. on Amazon. And let's let's talk about it. Where did you record it? Tell me all about it. Yeah, I've... it's actually... Uh... It's a full comedy special. Uh, the video is now on Amazon Prime. That's what I'm very excited about. Oh, so it's a DVD too. Yeah, I, it's uh, well, it's video, but I, I haven't released it. I mean, I can make DVDs, but I don't have it for sale on DVD because it's on Amazon Prime and some streaming services like that. But I made the decision not to get DVDs made because people because what's the point? Don't use it's DVDs 2014, anymore. Fourteen, almost 2015, yeah. probably when this will be released. And so, what's the point, right? Yeah. So it's in it's on uh, You're Amazon so tech. Prime, so people you can deserve watch. that yeah, I'm, shorty. I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm very nervous. Like I was watching you mess with your audio settings, and I'm like, I kind of want to jump in and see if I can help out. But I'm gonna sit back and let her do it. <laughs> it's actually very, very easy. I just, um, I am th- probably the only person born in the year I was born that is this technologically retarded. <laughs> I kind of like miss the boat by a little bit, and mm-hmm. it's weird. Oh, there's my co-host Mitzi <laughs> with her um, bark. She so Mitzi. I explained to every guest, but in case you don't know, Mitzi is the co-host of yes. the podcast. And she will bark a couple times um, <laughs> during recording. So that it's was quite all right. That was her uh, first comment. She does not like you trying to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> Don't help yeah. me with technology. Um, but, okay, so yeah, you... to get back to the special, I recorded it at the Ice House uh, last March. Uh, I, I... Oh. so <laughs> I was able to hire a film crew, and they they came in, and we uh, we shot the whole thing at the Ice House, and. Uh, it was great. I did all the editing myself and then released the audio last summer. And then the video just finally came out uh, this winter. Like the video settings, whenever you self-publish something with Amazon, like they're very rigorous settings you need to go through for everything. So it was uh, a little bit of a process getting ready to approve for quality control and all that kind of so stuff. So what does that mean? So do they have someone actually like monitoring like the, the ratios and everything to make sure it's like perfect for their... It's all like the... The, the color depths and the, the, the these things called codecs that you use when you're encoding video, like the way that that's all done, and there's certain bit rates that are done. Because you can have a high-definition video that is, say, a 2-gigabyte file, and you can have that same exact video done with slightly different settings that's still a high-definition video that is, like, 200 gigabytes. And to most people, you won't see that much of a difference, but what they do is they make you match, like, that 200 gigabyte specification so that you have to match everything to, like, the highest specification possible and make sure all your stuff is They want high-quality stuff. They want it to be as quality yeah. as possible. Like, they don't want to have any complaints about it looked bad because the encoding was bad. If it looks bad, it's because you shot it bad. That's what they <laughs> want it to be, right? So, uh, yeah, so I mean, it's like an ultra-low-budget comedy special, and uh, I'm kind of excited about it. Like, I, I you know, I, I must have watched it, I don't know, 30 times when I was doing the editing, because I had to go... I was going to say, because I, you know... And I hate watching it. I know, that's I like such it. a comedy thing, right? Like, that's such... Well, that's not true, because I heard Robert De Niro doesn't like to watch himself. Mm-hmm. I, You know, a lot of people think that comedians are narcissists, and we are kind of, mm-hmm. but we're also extremely self-deprecating. Yeah. And it's hard, right? Like, I try... I have uh, so many YouTube 
well, first of all, all the YouTube videos of me online, for those of you who've seen, are horrible, mm-hmm. awful, awful, yeah. awful, awful. And I actually have good footage of me, but I can't watch it. Like, I mm-hmm. can't watch it long. I know how to edit. And, yeah. You know, I went to college for that, but I can't sit there long enough to edit my good footage to put it on YouTube because it's so <laughs> it horrific. You to look at it. Yeah. It's so horrific, yeah. right? Watching yourself. Yeah. It's, I, uh, I went through not too long ago and I removed a bunch of old video I had in YouTube that like I hadn't watched That's in years and it's been up there and I was like, it's bad, right? I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, I don't want anybody to stumble across this because like now if I have stuff that I kind of want them to see, like I took a bunch of clips from the special and I put them up as like just one bit or whatever. I would edit out one bit and put it up. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I do a bit about uh, uh, like say the Jewish religion. I put that up for like Rosh Hashanah and stuff like that. Okay. Like, you know, uh, so I do things that were like topical at the time. Like I have a bit about the spelling bee I do when the spelling bee was going on. I put that one up and things like that. So I would edit these things out and I put those up and I was like, Oh, there's still like this five year old video of me at some bar in San Diego. It's like poorly. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want people to see that. So I went back and I deleted all the old ones. Uh, and there is an old video that is not in my account that I can't get rid of. And it, I have a couple comedy <laughs> time videos. Me. I have a couple <laughs> comedy time videos up there. Um, so for those of you who don't know, comedy time is yeah. a, very low budget mm-hmm. comedy series that shot at the ice house it's you know it's it's good for what it is but they won't certain videos you can't get taken down yeah and it, it's you know they've been doing that for well over 10 years i think comedy time right something yeah. like that so it's like you know there are videos of people from a long time ago on there with bits that we hadn't honed yet let's say that's a, probably a good way to talk about it well like, chris rockin talks about that he said you know he said that comedy is the only thing that you're failing in public mm-hmm. because we have to the nature of comedy is that we have to go out and we have to practice our material yeah. to get, make it better but we need an audience for that you can't just practice it in your basement right yeah and so we're failing out there in public in front of people and people will say well that comic's not that funny or this person sucks or whatever but there are bits that you know you know, name any comic mm-hmm. genius, Louis C.K., whoever have done that weren't funny at one point. Yeah, and you I'm, have to fail have to, to start get them funny. when it's bad because that's how you make it good. Uh, and that's why it's really hard to judge anybody in Los Angeles by what you see them do in Los Angeles as a comic. Because, like, you see them here and, like, we're, we see Five each other bits, open mics bits, and, yeah. you know, short spots. And we're doing, you know, stuff we're trying to make good to make into a class material and you're seeing it well before that point. Most of the time, I'm sure like, you know, Jim Jeffries is around town all the time and you can see him doing stuff, which is brand new. And he's a brilliant comic. Like his new special is awesome. Uh, and he's working it out. And yeah, and it's like his new stuff, like he's working on whatever he's going to put out in a year or two. You know what I mean? So like you get to see that now, which is kind of cool, but also it's, it's just, cool for it's a not comic. Funny yet. It's cool it's for cool us. for a comic <laughs> and for an audience like this person sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, but then they'll go on the road and then they'll do like their A material. That's where you get to see like, oh, they're really good. Yeah. And then they'll pepper in the new bits here and there. Yeah. 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 So you shot at the Ice House. How long is it? Uh, it's 46 minutes. Okay. Yeah. W- was Did you produce a night there? Uh yeah, I I've been doing shows there with uh, Mike Martori for the dirty, a the couple dirtiest years. Show, right? The dirtiest show on earth. <laughs> we call. Uh, marketing. In fact, we we actually got threatened. We used to we did a couple of them at the I at the uh, John Lovitz Club, and then we the John Lovitz Club got a cease and desist letter from Ringling Brother Ring, Ringling Brothers saying that is that like, why they closed down? No, that's not why they closed down. No, we are not to blame for them closing down. No, but no, they no, got no a, not a because and of desist. you, but. But I didn't know if that was because they got a cease and desist. No, no, no. It was uh, it was nothing to do with that. And they made us change the name. What we was the cease Lovitz, and desist? For? Saying that like it was Ringling Brothers saying like how like we have a trademark on the greatest show on earth and you're infringing on our trademark because it was called the greatest show on earth before. because no our show we were calling it the dirtiest show on earth and they were saying that was too close. And then, that is totally different. Yeah, totally different. <laughs> yeah, so the John Lovitz Club made us change the name. So we were going with like the Filthy Five for a while or something like that. I'm like, I did you shut down the John Lovitz Comedy Club? It's not my fault. <laughs> no. Rumor is they're reopening at uh, the Rosewood Hotel is the rumor. That is the rumor. I've heard that rumor I don't as well. know if that's going to happen or not, but that's the rumor I've heard. I'm surprised they didn't open there to begin with. When they opened at Universal, I was like, good luck with that. I mean, not to be negative, but if, for anyone who has ever been to the John Lovitz Comedy Club, Universal Studios, people kind of go there to go to the rides and it's very touristy. They go there to go to the movies, they go to the shop and hang out. It's yeah, not a place people a go for shows. It's not a good place for comedy. Yeah, so. it's uh, cuz there was the Bonkers Comedy Club there before. That Which failed. <laughs> failed. Yeah. And that, well, that one was open for like six months and it was gone. John Lovitz made a run of five years, probably something like that. He did. He did. And I wasted a good five years tr- getting in there and getting in very well with the management. And now 
where's my career was that <laughs> was that the first set of management or like the one that john lovitz then sued for like a couple hundred grand for stealing from um or was it the second several managements i know they went through three or four yeah i i got in with them because i got in and then the the people left and then i was still kind of there so i was a regular there and performing there regularly you know calling in avails and things and not yeah. having to go through the crazy hoops that you have to go through yeah i finally got to that point with them too uh and like then a year ago it shut down <laughs> yeah it's like like a year ago it was at the point where, like i could call in for spots and they had uh, d was doing a lot of the booking there and stuff and she liked me and i could call in for spots and i was getting paid spots there every now and then which I know, is great me too for a comic they, that's crazy because they paid like three times as much as you get paid at the improv because the improv is down to what 13 12 bucks something like that and they were paying 40 at lovitz i know and was, i i i don't know which is really sad for listeners who are not in the world of comedy that we're excited about 40 dollars. it's really sad and i just actually speaking of that you're sitting here and you can in my living room i have um i'm dying the stand-up uh biography mm-hmm. which a, another comedian told me to read and that's about the comedy strike in the 70s of comics trying to get paid mm-hmm. and it's just really sad because you know there's a sentence in the book where um, a younger comic is talking to Jay Leno or somebody. I can't remember. I'm sorry if I'm butchering this. But he says, wow, you guys used to work for free. I'm like, used to? Yeah, we still do. Yeah. What are you talking I'm about like, who to? wrote this book? Like, I would say 99% of the times that you get on stage, at least before you're a famous person, you're doing for free. 99% I, of the time. Exactly. And I, I, I went to New York when they were doing, they had the New York comedy strike. Mm-hmm. a few years ago where, yeah, I remember that. where the comics were trying to get paid as well and do a comedy union and i remember i was at the hot comedy club and there there were comics picketing outside and there was audience members and they were saying you know don't support this establishment mm-hmm. we don't get paid and people were like you guys don't get paid yeah because 99.9 <laughs> percent of the people i've met assume that when they pay that 10 15 20 that that's cover going to the that's going to the comics and that is absolutely not true it's going to the the comedy club mm-hmm. owner who then pays the staff and the comics get the drippings at the bottom yes. if, <laughs> if that right if that, if that. So, I can't tell you how many gigs I've done where the 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 pay was like you know a chicken dinner or uh, you know so your pay was always, two drink tickets. Always, and- always, always, listeners. Mm-hmm. I'm I know I've said this before, and I don't want to beg and plead, but I'm being serious. Follow us on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook because that helps us out a lot. Yeah, and also always buy merch. I have done so many shows where I leave and people are like. Oh, you know, I can't afford to to buy merch. I just spent, you know, thirty dollars on dinner and ten dollars mm-hmm. on this and twenty dollars on tickets. None of that money goes to us. Yeah. Even if you spent a hundred dollars that night, none of that money goes. Yeah. And to I'll us. tell you another way. Like, let's say you are broke, right? Because there's a lot of people that are broke these days. Uh, another way you can help out comics if you like what they do, like Rosie was talking about earlier, go online and leave them positive comments on their, or follow them. on their stuff. Follow them on their social media. Leave them positive comments. Like if they have a product that's out that's digital, leave a good review for them. That helps because those a lot. positive reviews help a lot in terms of pushing their exposure. Like as they get a lot more good reviews, they get pushed up all those search lists on the sites like Amazon and Netflix and whatever, and that really helps a lot in terms of getting eyeballs. And you guys should know this because I drill it into your head every episode. It's the same thing with the podcast. So any type of digital media, yes. any type of follows, anything helps. And a lot of people, I've had people, well, I'm not going to follow you, you know, this and that. And I've asked them, like, why? Like, oh, well, like, they don't see a point in it, right? Mm-hmm. But if you do like us, you don't have any money to spend $10 in a DVD or a CD or $20 or whatever on merch, actually following us does help. Yeah. Because industry people, producers, other people look at that and say, they look oh, this, at numbers. this person has this amount of followers, mm-hmm. this person. So, so you know, the excuse, oh, I don't have any money, but I thought you were great. Like, yeah, it's... It's kind of a slap in the face. I know you guys don't mean it like that, but it kind of is a yeah, slap in the is. face. <laughs> That's like the one thing we can do. Like, like it doesn't cost you anything. Just follow me. Did you hear about the giant purge that happened on Instagram today? I did. I've seen I've seen my Instagram. It says your your followers may change. Luckily, I don't have hardly any followers on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> I've got like 400 on Instagram. I'm like, I'm not losing anybody. But, I'm not losing. They're all real people. They're all like my friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know mine are all actual people. And then I, I read that uh, there was an account that went from like 2.3 million down to 87. Really? Because they were, they they were all bought, bots. They were all bots. Bought a, and they, they just paid money to some service to get a bunch of fake followers. I You know what? I... Just think a lot of there's a lot of bots. I know for Twitter, I'll have a lot of I get them that follow me porn, automatically. Yeah. Porn people follow me or other people that I really don't think are real people. Mm-hmm. And they'll just follow me because I follow other people or I follow other porn stars or I follow whatever. Yeah. I get a lot of porn bots and I get a lot of weird <laughs> bots that I just think I, I, I just know they're bots. Yeah. You can tell. You can tell. Because like the usernames are 
X Y Z one two three whatever. Like it's all like you're like oh, that's not, so nobody would pick that. Nobody chooses that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like that's somebody's password. That's what that is. That's not a username. That's a password. So um, that's funny. Um, so you ha- uploaded everything online. Were you afraid yeah. you were going to get hacked by North Korea? Uh, I was not. I don't have any Kim Jong Un jokes. Uh, uh, the great leader Kim Jong Un. That's, that's so. What, so what do you think about all this? Do you do you think that North Korea really did hack Mitzi? is very upset about this. She doesn't yeah. like Koreans because they eat dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched Obama's press conference earlier today. I listened to it as well. And he, he, actually, and he said that the FBI confirmed he, that that was the case. He was doing a lot of stand-up, by the way. Yeah, he was. I've never seen him have this much fun before. <laughs> it was kind of interesting to see. He was like, uh, really? Seth Rogen and James Franco? Because <laughs> normally, he's not fun at all. Like, Obama's a... Not he doesn't seem like a fun guy ever. Well, today if, he you, did. if you watch, if you watched George W. Bush, he actually did a lot of stand up. Yeah, he was he, he was, was kind of fun. But I think one of his speechwriters was a stand up because, and, and I'm not saying this to make fun of him. Mm-hmm. He actually, as a fellow comedian, he had joke yeah. structure yeah. in his speeches. We look at, uh, I mean, Nixon. The way that Ben Stein got his career started, he was a speechwriter for Nixon. There, there was a there was a stand up on on George W. Bush's s- probably s- staff yeah. writing because there were several speeches that I saw that he was doing stand up, and I'm not saying <laughs> I, I and I, I'm I'm t- I, listen, I tell guys, you, I, I don't think I've ever laughed harder than when he said <laughs> I'm the decider. <laughs> you know, that's like the funniest thing ever. It's like I I'm not saying this to talk down on George W. Bush. I honestly. Mm-hmm saw joke structures written mm-hmm. into his speeches. Sure. Yeah, I, I believe it. I, mean, I bet uh, almost all public figures of that stature have comedy writers as part of that uh, staff because they, they want to make people seem human, and that's one way they can do it with humor. Just so you know, even though Mitzi is the co-host of Out of the Box Podcast, I have never heard her this vocal in my life, so I might I think have Mitzi to... is a ginger phobe. I might have to give her a bone. Um <laughs> I do not excessive barking like excessive barking. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, she has a voice and she's allowed to say whatever she wants about the podcast uh, since she is the official co-host. But that mm-hmm. was a little too co-hosty. <laughs> <laughs> so what were we talking about? We we're talking about uh, oh, um, North Korea. North Korea. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the hacking, uh, I, I tend to believe that, OK, yes, they they did this. Which, you don't think this is just like a fake thing from the U.S. government so we can like put more sanctions or attack them or, no. or counter? No. You think no. they did it? I I. I believe North Korea more than I think it's a fake thing from the U.S. government uh, because I think a lot of the conspiracy theories about the U.S. government – I don't think the U.S. government is uh, staffed by smart enough people to pull off all these conspiracies <laughs> people like believe they do. Like I'm just like, really? You think they're capable of that? Like have you been to the DMV? Like these are the people you think can pull that stuff off? So, Actually, are you aware that many um, government agencies do not have email yet? Wow. <laughs> I did not know that. They're actually were more technologically retarded than me, which is yeah. bad. Well, the thing that I would say that really to me sticks out is that Sony, huge corporation, huge technology base. They've got tons of computer engineers, and they're still sending out just regular emails with sensitive data. like Not encrypted? Like uh, how they don't have their own intranet that's internal that they use for their internal communications is beyond me because if you're a company that big— Most corporations have encrypted email. Uh, I I I wish that were the case. Uh, well, a, a lot of major corporations. Have yeah, a lot of them do, and yeah. the one you know, a lot of like banks and stuff like that do for sure. Uh, but I'm saying like it's it, the technology exists, and Sony has the people that know about this technology. And I'm sort of astonished that in their entertainment branch that they don't have anybody that's actually doing these kinds. Of things. It's kind of like when the hacking happened with all the celebrities and their and their photos that came out. Like you know, it's the same actions that took place in terms of like what somebody actually did. They they hacked a system and they took data and they're spreading it out there now. And it's just this is a different type of data they're spreading out there. But it, it, these celebrities are rich people, and it's like, how do they not have a, a technology guy who's like, hey, uh, by the way, don't put a picture in this thing because it could come <laughs> out someday. You know what I mean? Like, like, how do these people not have somebody telling them about the tech stuff? Because you have to realize, like, there there are people that do that, and they know how to protect these things. I were you were you offended by by the celebrity photo hack? Because you know, a lot of people were offended. I don't know if I am just. Completely I'm, delusional. I'm not offended by anything. I wasn't offended by it at all. I would be offended if I were Jennifer Lawrence or whoever got hacked. Okay, this is so vain. Mm-hmm. 
I would only be offended if it was a bad shot of me. <laughs> Like if it was, and you like, delete those on the phone anyway. And you, you delete, delete those. Yeah. Like, why would you keep a bad shot? Like, if I, if they leaked photos of me and I looked hot, yeah. I would like pretend to be slightly <laughs> outraged. You're like, oh, this is an outrage. <laughs> you should not go to www.rosytrend.com and see these but, photos. I mean, yeah. it, it's like free publicity, and most yeah. of them have done sexy photo shoots anyway, or whatever. The, the I really victims. don't. I really don't think it's that offensive per se. I mean, you put a naked photo of you in the cloud, like hello. Yeah. The the victims in that situation uh, came out looking great. Because nobody thinks less of any of those women. And everyone was Googling the crowd. It was like PR crazy. And the thing that I find a little weird is that all these websites were, you know, like Jezebel and Gawker and all the, you know, all the gossip blogs and stuff. They were like, this is an outrage. We will not even talk about these other than to condemn them, blah, blah, blah. Right. They said all that. And now the Sony data comes out. Also a hacking situation involving real victims. There are people who have their personal information. They could be subject to identity theft, all kinds of stuff from this hacking situation. And these very same websites that were condemning hacking and releasing information are now freely sharing all this information that came out and not seeing that as being hypocritical in the slightest. And that, to me, I'm just like... it's it's data that was not yours, and you're sharing it. So how is that any different to me? I don't care whether it's a photo or it's somebody's... Uh, private emails from the internal company i mean it's the same thing you're doing so first of all i am a pretty diehard feminist but i wasn't offended the way i mean some of these websites they go too far they're saying you know it's it they were it was almost like sexual harassment i heard i heard people saying that it was like uh uh it (laughs) i forget the exact term but they 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 had some kind of rape they were calling it they were being they were being they were being thought raped they were being too that's what that's from these they said they were being (laughs) thought raped by men who were masturbating to these photos they were being too dramatic about it and too it too and and you guys know you've heard some of my past episodes you listeners know i'm a pretty diehard feminist but i i mean as someone who has actually been sexually assaulted i'm offended Mm -hmm. that people looking at your picture is considered the only time i would view hacking of nude photos or hack or anything like that as a sexual assault is in the case of child pornography yeah where people are having photos taken against their will their children this and that but if you're a grown woman and you're taking nude selfies or whatever and hacks i'm sorry maybe i i'm an extremist or whatever i don't consider it that that like much of a violation rosie don't apologize for being rational And and as someone who, again, I have been sexually assaulted and I'm a feminist, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't s- consider someone looking at a photo of you. You're not physically being harmed by someone that you don't know looking at a yeah. photo of you that you don't know it's, about. Here's the thing. If, let's say these photos had been hacked and they were being shared just on 4chan and 8chan and all these, you know, whatever chan sites, right? And they're just being shared there and it never came out to the public these people the same action was happening they had no idea Nobody's it was happening it doesn't it. affect them yeah and, and and i mean once it became public i get that okay they say hey it's making me look bad i get that if they say hey i object to the fact that i look bad but the fact that somebody's looking at it and doing whatever they're doing in their bathroom afterwards that has no that has doesn't change that it, do- in any way. it doesn't because there are pictures of jennifer lawrence in a bikini that guys would yeah. jerk off to mm-hmm. and there's and those are freely available online and there, you know, yeah. I mean, Kate Upton. Can I? You, you've basically seen Kate Upton <laughs> naked for a couple of years now, and then like, oh, all of a sudden, there's like a tiny bit more of Kate Upton you get to see. I mean, I remember when I was in college, the big thing that was happening was they were photoshopping celebrity heads onto nude bodies. That's what, and one, distributing of, that's what those. one of the girls said. Oh, it was a and like, oh, it's a, it's a fake head on my body. <laughs> I was like, nobody does that anymore because we. <laughs> That's back when porn was hard to get on the internet. That's how long I've been on the internet. Like I remember when porn was hard to get. It was uh I remember a long time I ago. remember the box of sticky magazines under my high school boyfriend's bed. <laughs> um <laughs> like why is this sticky? What is this? Um <laughs> So so please don't be offended by mm-hmm. stuff like that people. That's just silly. That's <laughs> silliness. It, if you're taking naked selfies, know that t- even if your phone is private, you don't put it on the cl- someone's going to Somewh- find it if somewhere. Someone, the thing to to take don't away take from, naked selfies or delete them right yeah, away. <laughs> the thing to take from all this hacking stuff is whatever. If you do anything using a device that uses electricity, if somebody wants it, if somebody wants it bad enough, <laughs> they can get it. So keep that in your mind. So like if. It's the whole thing with like you know anonymity on the internet. I know a lot of people are very concerned about their anonymity, and there's a lot of. First uh, of all, okay, let me go off on a tangent mm-hmm. about this, Matt. Uh, for those of you who are going crazy with the anonymous shit online, no one gives an f about you. 
Okay. Yeah. People care about your social security and your credit card information. Mm-hmm. Stop making your freaking Facebook seven layers of private. Yes. Okay. If you're na- let me explain to you something. I'm going to go off because I have not had a chance to go off on this tangent and it really mm-hmm. bugs me and you brought it up, Matt. Yes. If your name is Jennifer Smith or John Taylor or something super simple, do not make your Facebook page super private so no one can find you and don't make the picture of a kitty cat. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody can knows find you. Yeah. Nobody, okay, if your name is Greg Constantinopoulos or something really long and weird, that's fine, mm-hmm. right? If you're the only Greg the only Constantinopoulos yeah. or whatever. But if your name is Matt Walker, mm-hmm. you want to be Matt Walker comedian. You mm-hmm. want to be able to be found. And well, I don't want people to know what I'm doing. What? What are you doing? Are you in the CIA? Are you in the <laughs> FBI? I am your high school buddy. I'm trying to add you so we can keep in touch. Yeah. I can't find you when you have 9,000 layers of privacy on Facebook. Nobody cares about you. I'm yeah. not trying to be mean. Nobody fucking cares about you. It's it's the thing that... Stop uh, being an egomaniac. People have this sense that they need to protect everything. Like, I've I never... Need to be private. Why? No one I've can find you. I've never cared about being myself on the internet. I know that there are some people... Okay, I get it if you... Uh, are applying for jobs and things like that and you say hey I want to keep a wall between my real life and my internet life but you life. can't have a name like Jennifer Smith with a picture of a freaking kitty cat no yeah. qualifying information at all nobody yeah. it's like how are people Facebook and social media are used for people to keep in mm-hmm. touch how the hell am I supposed to find you when you have 9,000 layers of privacy, nobody cares about you yeah. that much. And, and also, the thing is, let's say you go through all these steps and you're like, oh, I'm going to protect myself and I'm going to do whatever. Uh, anybody can fake anything from you. Like, I could make a Rosie Tran profile and make it look exactly like yours and make you say the worst thing in the world and then put it out there and then be like, oh, here's what Rosie Tran said. And people will believe it because I can make it look real. And it's not hard to do. It's and- not hard to do and there there are websites that are dedicated to like shaming people for things that have been said and there have been many cases where people have they're like I didn't say they, that yeah I mean they, <laughs> they've had things that were submitted because like somebody who doesn't like them submitted them to like these, these websites like I'm gonna out racist and they put these fake racist posts up and they photoshop them and then send them these websites and these people have real world repercussions for them and that's where I think people need to like draw a line and be like look the internet is the internet and the real world is the real world let's not try to make everything be a combination of the two sometimes you can say things on the internet that are just on the internet and they don't really affect what you do in real life uh you know there's like cases where there's a woman who was flying to africa and she made a tweet and she had 50 followers just her friends she made some tweet like oh i'm not gonna get aids i'm white ha 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 and then by the time she landed this thing had been tweeted so much she got fired from her job at a pr firm and it's like she made a silly joke that wasn't a good joke but she didn't make it as a public statement she's not obama speaking to the country she's some lady who works in pr at some company who just made a joke to her friends that was just nothing it wasn't even it wasn't mean spirited. She's not saying I'm gonna try to make Africans feel bad about the AIDS crisis and I'm gonna make fun of AIDS patients. She didn't do any of that. It was just something that happened and it, it blows up. And I think that's one of my concerns with the way the internet works today. The, we get these outrage brigades of people about anything where there's like we got to pile on and people are ruin too the life of people offended. And I I don't like this. First of all, as a comedian, obviously I don't mm-hmm. like when people are constantly offended. But you know, as you guys know from some of my past episodes, I always advocate working on yourself first. Mm-hmm. If you are constant, if someone, if, if you're constantly getting offended and you're constantly, this is a fear based thinking, you're constantly offended, angry, pissed off. You, we need to relax. Okay. Yeah. No, no as if, if it's a serious issue, for example, cyberbullying and someone's really depressed and they're, they're actually causing some type of mental anguish mm-hmm. where someone wants to commit suicide or something. Okay. I can see that. I can't see that. But if someone is making some offhanded, you know, comment, I think uh, Gilbert Godfrey made a joke and then he was fired from the Athlet campaign. He tweeted a bunch of jokes after the tsunami, uh, some of which were pretty funny. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then he lost his Athlet job. In, in that case, I kind of get it because Athlet's biggest market is Japan. So, I mean, you know, with them, it was like they were getting a lot of pressure from their Japanese salespeople were like, they don't want to deal with it. I, just, like, I, just lost don't, job. I just don't like the constant because it's fake. Okay, it's fake. Yep. When celebrities tweet out or people tweet out these things and then they have to issue apologies and they have to do this. The apologies and they have are to do always that. fake. The apologies are always fake. Obviously, they they wouldn't have been sorry if they weren't caught for saying it. Yes. And second of all, you know, I understand the idea that we're all, that everyone, if you're a celebrity and you're on, online, you're a role model. I get it. Mm-hmm. But we also need to teach our children healthy boundaries and what is, you can't go around getting offended by everything and suing everyone and mm-hmm. doing everything it's just crazy you can't constantly blame everyone else outside of yourself for issues that you have yes there there seems to be a a rush to judgment 
uh, <laughs> these days with people. Like, it's because I'm whatever I identify as, and that's why this bad thing is happening to me. And sometimes it's just, sure, you happen to be whatever this thing is you identify as, and also something else happened that's either coincidence or something you might have done to cause this thing to happen to you. Well, and and it's, it's not always people are piling on because you're uh, Asian or piling on because you're a white guy or because you're uh, a black woman or because you're trans or whatever. It's not always that. Sometimes you just happen to be this thing and— this other thing happened. It's not always related. And also sometimes you need to stop blaming other things like, oh, it's because I'm Asian. No, maybe you're an asshole yeah. and people just don't like you and you need to take responsibility and change your horrible personality instead of blaming your race or gender or ethnicity <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I talked about this on a past episode. You guys know I, I used to get really offended. Uh, you know, I was doing this show and like every single comic on lineup had an Asian girl being a prostitute joke. Mm -hmm. And I was totally offended. And, you know, I was like, okay, this is a sign from God that I either need to get a sense of humor about this, get over it or something. Mm -hmm. Because literally every yeah. single comic on the lineup had a joke about Asian women being horse. <laughs> so instead of fighting it and getting offended and getting pissed off, I embraced it. Yeah. I actually was last in the lineup. I was headlining. And I made fun of... Just make fun of them I doing made fun a, of a them. hacky joke. I was like, wow, yeah. I guess you know, I made fun of how un unoriginal everyone mm -hmm. was because every single comic yeah. basically did the same joke. And it, the crowd... Like went crazy. They're gonna love that. And they love release it because, like, because they're all thinking it. Too. They're all thinking it. They're too. gonna notice yeah. it. Yeah. And so instead of getting offended, and now anytime I hear another comic making some hacky Asian joke, instead of getting offended, I'm like, oh, awesome! I can make fun of them. Yeah, exactly. It's you can sort of uh, well. That's one thing that you see a lot on the internet. People like, oh, I got to put a trigger warning on this, or whatever. You know, the world doesn't come with trigger warnings. <laughs> if there is something like I read uh, about a case the other day about some students at a law school that wanted to get out of a class because they were teaching laws about rape and that it was triggering them because, uh, you know, and, and these people weren't even necessarily victims of sexual assault. Like, they were just saying, like, it's disturbing to, to hear about this. Yeah, it's but like, don't well, you want to hear the laws that are going to protect It's like, those it? are the laws. Like, if you want to become a lawyer and you want to do something about this problem as part of your time in the law, then you need to know about what the laws say and how you can interact with them and what the cases are and, and how that works. And it, it's... People are trying to protect themselves from being uncomfortable, and I don't think protecting yourself from being uncomfortable is a good way to go about living your life. I think, and it's not a good way to deal with being. I think uncomfortable. making yourself uncomfortable more is the way to deal with that. If something bothers you a little bit, maybe make yourself go out and interact with that and figure out exactly why it is that that bothers you, and deal and with then it, deal get with over that it. Yeah. internal issue, or find some way to deal with it, like you did, where you're like, you know what, this bothers me, but. I have a way to deal with this and actually flip it back around. And you found a great way to do it. And I think you can deal with a lot of things in life where I think discomfort is, is not bad. Like I had a, an old boss who used to have this uh, saying where he said, like, if you say, oh, I'm feeling stressed. He's like, you know, stress is good. Distress is bad. He's like, if you're stressed, that means you're working hard and there's a lot of stuff going on and you've got a little bit of pressure on you. It's forcing you to do the right thing. But if you're distressed, then like, let me know. But he's like, you're, you're like spaced out. out. You're, yeah. you're, you're checked out. That's yeah. not a good sign. You're not dealing with reality. Yeah. But if you're just, you know, you're coping with it, that's. I That's mean, normal. <laughs> they, they, nobody listening to this podcast right now is the worst off person in the world. You know what I mean? There are there are literally at least three billion people on the planet that have it way worse than anybody listening to this podcast. At least three billion, probably more like five billion, that have things a hell of a lot worse than any of us. So, sure, there are things that we need to change in our society and things that are bad. But you know, let's not dwell on it too let's much. Not forget about the fact that. <laughs> You know, we're, we're doing okay. You know, no matter how, you know, I live in a dumpy apartment I've lived in for 12, 13 years or whatever it is. You know, like, you know, I, I have my own problems, but, you know, I, I can't complain too bad because there are people that have a hell of a lot worse that uh, need the help more than I do. That's that's so true. Very, very positive note. And and it's so true. And I had I, people complaining about my album cover. Uh, oh, because of the gay? Yeah, because it was... Uh, cause so, I, so, so let me explain for those of you who yeah. don't know. So Matt's album cover is him and there was a... Prop 8, right? Yeah. Uh, which was a... The Prop 8 was in California. It was a proposition that passed uh, that basically banned gay marriage in the state of California. Yes. And then that went to the court system, and then it got overturned, and now we have legal gay marriage in California. And, and, and your after cover... that election, there was a big campaign after the election, which made no sense to me why they waited until <laughs> after the election. If, it would, if all the people that were upset about it had showed up to vote, it never would have passed in the first place. But then this one uh, photographer... 
started charging people 40 bucks to take these photos that he takes where they put duct tape on their mouth and they write no hate on their cheek. And my album was called Hater because I, I talk a lot about things I hate and people call me <laughs> an all night hater a lot. So I thought it was kind of a clever thing to do the duct tape on the mouth and I put H8R on my cheek and like, people this, are like the photos. And there were some people that were like really offended. They're like, how dare you co-opt this or whatever. It's a valuable symbol. I'm just like, it's just a picture. You know, I... I don't have. You any... thought it was clever and funny, and people are offended. Yeah, and it's like it's silly. Like, well, how is seeing that photo of me going to change your life in any way? It's. I, I am very offended, Matt. Yeah. You offended me. I've ruined your that's life. It. Rosie. The podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do think that society we do need to relax a lot, and I, I'm always surprised. You know, my material isn't crazy you know, edgy or crazy the way, you know, we, mm-hmm. our friend Mike Mortori that we oh, yeah. talked about, he is a very, we know people who are, he pushes the envelope crazy, yeah. and I'm, I'm not offending Mike by saying this. He knows no. he pushes the envelope. Oh, he totally does. He and, revels in it. And he loves it. And yeah. yet I'll, I'll have people come up to me. Oh my God. You know, I was, I, I can't believe some of the things you said up there. I'm like, what, what do you do? Like, what is going on in your life that you're offended or, or upset or shocked by something that I'm saying, which I really don't consider my material that, over the edge Mm -hmm. you know so i think a lot of people really need to relax take a chill pill and if you want to improve the world then you can start by having a sense of humor about it and you know joan rivers in her documentary she's doing uh she was doing a joke about uh special needs kids Mm -hmm. and this guy goes how you know how dare you you know i have a special needs kids and and she handles it great she says she goes what do you mean Uh, you know i'm making fun of it so we can laugh and heal and it's it's uh, I know from a fact I've got a friend uh, who you know Anthony Ramos mm-hmm. who's got uh, a, a disease called CMT which is sort of similar to a muscular dystrophy so he's now in a scooter like he doesn't walk much anymore but I mean I I never see him happier than when people are making fun of him about that stuff like because <laughs> I think throughout throughout much of his life and I think for many people who are disabled or they have issues like that they get put in a special box and they're like you can't handle having people you make can't fun talk of you about, about this. this. So we're going to ignore it, it and yeah, pretend yeah. it's not there. And then when you treat them the way you treat everyone else, they feel included. And I, I've done shows with people in wheelchairs and people with all kinds of stuff in the audience. And they're never happier than when you make fun of them and you're telling jokes about them and in- including them in the same way that you would include everyone else in the audience and treating them the if same. you're going to make fun of black guy, you're going to make fun of, you know, Absolutely. a chick in the audience or whoever. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think, uh, like I know, You've said something I noticed a couple times because people get really funny. You said the word retarded and people go oh. crazy when you say the word retarded. <laughs> and it's like, I totally forgot. It's special. What is it? Special needs or special? Yeah, well, it's, you know, and, and the thing is, that's a word that has actual meaning that means something very specific in a lot of instances. And in, I mean, you know, in music, I might get a hate in music mail. class, uh, I when might I was get in a hate uh, mail, Matt, I've, I've gotten a couple, a couple. When I was in orchestra, because uh, I, I played timpani in orchestras like for many years. What did you play? Timpani. I was a uh, what percussionist. Is those are the big kettle drums. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I remember, you know, there's, like, a musical term, retard, that is in there. That means, to, like, to slow down. Okay. And there are things, like, you know, you use the word retard when, like, you're retarding growth and things. Like, it means things are slowing down. There's, yeah. like, a specific meaning to that word that a lot of times now people are hesitant to use that word for those meanings even now. And it's, like, do we really want to, like... I mean, it. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say like I'm drawing the line at be using the word retard. You know, it's like because that's a stupid hill to die on. So like, if so, I I would never call somebody who is uh with mental issues a retard because that's cruel and it's mean. But in other instances, I don't think that just having the word around um, somehow demeans them by you saying like, oh, I feel retarded for you know I'm technologically that retarded or or gay or fag. Yeah. You know, there's all these. Oh, it's a hate. Mm-hmm. It's a hate speech, or it's a. I consider hateful speech hateful speech, and mm-hmm. that's it. If I'm coming up to a homosexual man and I'm saying you fucking faggot, you disgusting. Yeah. That is hate speech because Absolutely. I'm being hateful. Yes. If you're being silly and I go, oh my God, you're so gay, Matt. And I'm yeah. saying it, first of all, my brother's gay. Yeah. You know, and I love my brother more than anything. You know, I am not saying it in an offensive way. And I think intention is something that people don't take into account anymore. Mm-hmm. They, oh, well, that person said this or that or this. You know, when I would hang out with my comic friends, you know, they would call me, oh, you gook, you chink, whatever. <laughs> It's not yeah. offensive because they're saying it in a loving way. It's the meaning behind and, it. And the same things are being said about them. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, uh, playful among ribbing. Friends, playful ribbing. Yeah. I mean, like, if you go around and you see comics and they're hanging out with each other, if you just listen to what they said 
and you if you just overheard it, you would think, wow, these people really hate each other and they can't stop saying mean things to each other because that's what we do. You know, like I was driving up here, I was talking to Mike on the phone, Mike Moratori, and he said something about uh, he would, had to get a, a shot uh, and they were doubling it up because they said, you know, if you're a – well, they said, you know, if right now you're at a level five, we're trying to get you to a 10. I was like, Mike, have you seen yourself in a mirror? There's no way you're ever going to be a 10. Right? <laughs> so it's like you know, we say mean things to each other because it's just funny. It's, you know, we but have it's, fun. But I don't consider it mean because it's, yeah. it's said from a fun-loving place. Yeah. And Mike actually – oh, my God. So I was – I've been with my husband for – four years now we've been five years we've been married for four Mm -hmm. and the first show i took him to i was on a show with mike Mm -hmm. and um so guys google mike mortori his comedy is hilarious but very edgy and And by the way he's got a comedy special coming out on amazon prime in probably january do you know what it's called uh crowd work crowd work okay which um is appropriate for him so we'll give him a plug a little plug since we're talking about him so much on the podcast but i i told him i said you know this is my new my new boyfriend at the time i said he's gonna be sitting in the front row so go easy (laughs) well mike worst worst mistake he could have made by pointing it out (laughs) i i actually thought mike was gonna go easy on him but he just went all out oh my god this perv he probably has yellow fever what is he like and he just went crazy on him and it was kind of like my husband's um what is it called? Trial by fire. Not trial by fire. What is it called? Where you, where you guys are in a fraternity and they go. Oh, the hazing. The hazing. It was kind of <laughs> yeah. like my husband's hazing into the comedy world because uh, my husband is like a nerdy IT guy and he's very mm-hmm. shy. And I was like, "Well, welcome to dating a comic." Yes, this, is, this is what you're gonna. <laughs> this is what you're in for. This is what we do. But it's yeah. fun, and I think you're right about having to deal with your problems. And a lot of people don't deal with their problems. They don't get uncomfortable mm-hmm. which is how you deal with stuff you're like like me i get you know i've had tons of hate mail tons i have i have two websites i have funnymat.com with all my comedy stuff and i also have mattwalkersucks.com where i put all i've of the heard you say get. that but i thought you were joking no no it's a real thing you can look it up on your computer right <laughs> I heard, no i, I heard have, you talk about it um either on your website or well, i do a bit on, I, I forgot where you talked yeah, i do a, a bit, bit about right? it and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i thought you were and joking no it's a real thing like i take mean tweets that people send me whatever because like i go online and i make fun of things that people like and then i get angry responses which i love when that happens because then i get to laugh about it jarring for me i was making fun of i've received well over 20 death threats over the last three years Uh, on first of all if people are saying death threats over tweets they need to do some personal development i mean it's like i it (laughs) but the thing is i don't they're not they're not real that's the thing is like yeah. when people tweet threats on Twitter, it's not real. Like there are people who are like, I left my house because of that. It's like you didn't need to leave your house because <laughs> nobody is showing up because nobody really cares enough to actually do it. They're doing it to get a rise out of you and they feel like this is the way they can do it over the internet. Uh, you know, what I do when I get death threats, I'm like, okay, I'll be at the Ice House on January 10th at 1030. You should go there and you can shoot me in the face there. Uh, it'll cost you five bucks to get in, but <laughs> then you can kill me. You do know? You, but does it ever jar you? Like when I, I've gotten a couple hate mails and a couple, not, um, I remember I was making fun of Beyonce mm-hmm. and, you know, there, her fans will there go crazy. are a lot of, what's her fan base called? The Queen Bees. Oh, Queen Bees. Bee, Queen Bees. Something yes. with bees. Something yeah. with bees. <laughs> Yeah, Queen Bee. The hive, something with bees. Yeah. Because she's the Queen Bee, so they're like the, the I don't the know. The Bay Hive or something. Something weird, yeah. right? So her like documentary was coming out on, think I think on HBO, and I'm sorry, it looked really bad, and it just, it looks stupid. And I'm, mm-hmm. I, I, I typically, you you go about making fun of people online. I typically yeah. don't do that as much. My stand-up is more about making fun of myself and the stuff I go online, I typically don't do that. But I mean, Matt, it looked bad. <laughs> it looked, bad. It looked yeah, it really, look bad. really, really bad. Yeah. And it looked just like a, just a narcissistic, it just looked horrible. Yeah. And so I tweeted, oh my, you know, I didn't even say anything that haterish. I didn't even at Beyonce. I yeah. just said, oh, <laughs> OMG, that Beyonce, you know, documentary looks really bad. I got a swell of beehivers mm-hmm. just attacking me like you wouldn't believe. I was like, whoa, I mm-hmm. can't have an opinion on Beyonce. Do, like, do you know wh- whose fan base is the worst of all that? Demi Lovato. Really? Her fans are the worst humorless little... I wasn't even making a joke about Beyonce. I was just like, wow, this looks bad. It was just a thought that came out of my mind. I didn't mean anything from it. I don't hate Beyonce. I'm actually a fan of hers. It just looked really bad. I got like, so many. How dare negative, you say anything? How that's dare not you? Like, She's the queen bee. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, oh my god, you guys need to calm the fuck down. It's there's a, there's a group on Twitter of Michael Jackson fans that go that way if you say anything about Michael Jackson. And it's like he's been dead for five years. <laughs> like he can take it. You know, it's uh... 
So Demi Lovato, you're making fun of her. You were attacked. Oh, oh, totally. I mean, I've gotten a bunch of death threats from Demi Lovato fans. Uh, so what did they say? Uh, ones like, uh, I'm going to come to your house and shoot you in the face with a gun. <laughs> like they're very specific. Like a lot of them are. I, I only count them as death threats if they if they say I'm going to kill you. If the if there's ones where they say like, oh, go die, then it's hundreds, hundreds of those. <laughs> Like, those aren't death threats. Those are just people wishing that I die. That's fine. I wish people, I probably wish death on about 3,000 people on the freeway on my drive over here. You know, everyone on the five freeway, I was like, I hope all of you people die because you don't know how to drive. You know, I wish death on people all the time when I'm driving, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. That's the thing. Like, you know, thoughts and words don't actually have consequences that way. I mean, there, there are some cases where there are some things that people can say that are, are wrong and they cross the line. And, uh, like, I, I get into it a lot with like teenagers and stuff on Twitter. So I have a personal line I don't cross where I would be careful because some of these teenagers, you don't know their state. Yeah, like teenagers I, can be manic. There can I, be depression. I and never suicide. make fun of the way they look as kids. Cause I think that's crossing the line. Like yeah. I think that's a, a, a thing I don't want to do. And what I usually do is an, I, eth- an ethical hater tweet. <laughs> I, like the thing that I usually wind up doing, cause I, I'll sometimes get into back and forth with these kids when they get really mad is I just make fun of their grammar. Cause they're all morons and none of them can spell. And I just make fun of their English and it's just, it makes them, in fact, one, I made probably her head explode because she was tweeting things to me and I just kept replying back with stuff like, did you know there's 128 Ritz crackers in a box? And then it was like, did you know that there are like how many saltines in a box? I just kept looking up like, do you know there's like 36 Oreos in a package? Like I just kept replying with random things. Weird about stuff, right? Until stuff she like gave that. up. And then she finally gave up and it was just like getting angrier and angrier because I was hitting her with these non sequiturs that's funny to me <laughs> it's funny to rile people up like that with guys things. do not do not tweet <laughs> stuff like that at comedians you know how tweet we it are. at me if you're tweet gonna tweet somebody tweet, tweet it at me because i love it um so you i want to talk about this because you mentioned you mentioned using social media a lot mm-hmm. and you won the shorty award yes. in 2012 yeah beating out jim norton that's amazing we, we were co-winners that year although jim norton claims that he didn't win but i don't know why why does he why does he say that well because i i went to the ceremony he was in new york at the time center and no he wasn't there and then they gave me the award and then they they released the winners and then the next day they came out and put out a press release and then they listed both of us as co-winners and he's like uh and i think it's because he was on opie and anthony at the time now it's Oh, it's uh, it's just Opie, just Opie and the Jim. Opie show. It's the yeah. Opie show with Jim Norton, right? That's what they're billing it as. But because Anthony also because Anthony is a crazy tw- person. Well, he supposedly was it because he tweeted or he tweeted a bunch of photos of a woman and used a lot of racially insensitive terms. I would say at the bare minimum, if not downright <laughs> racist terms. And uh, you know that's something that he's sort of been known for doing. It's he's an uh, an instigator, I would say. Yeah. And he instigated probably a little too much in this case, and he lost his job over it. But uh, so a lot of the fans of that show, like they knew, because uh, la- last minute that show all of a sudden was like, hey, let's get some people that are involved with the show uh, awards for this thing. Like, what awards <laughs> can we win? And they found out about the Shorty Awards. Like, hey, we've got a big user base. Let's have them all tweet about this stuff and then get them in there. And what happens is, so like the last minute they tweeted enough to get uh, Jim nominated in the comedian category and some other people because like it's sort of based on public nominations. So you were then, having people tweet at you yeah. with hashtag and if comedian. you're in like the top six or whatever, then they go to a judging panel wow. who actually look at the accounts of everyone and they say, hey, this person is actually the best comedian in social media. This person is actually the best. So uh, who is judging you? Uh, I know Nick Cannon was on the panel. Uh, a bunch of like random celebrities that you know uh, like. <laughs> You know, like B and C list, C and D list celebrities. So they went through your tweets and read them. And- yeah, they looked at the stuff that I submitted as like you know my best tweets or whatever. It's you know I don't remember exactly. <laughs> so what you had was. to do a submission pack. Yeah, you had to like send in like your info or whatever, and then uh, so I actually went to the award ceremony and then like I I got the award there and then like I guess the next day on the radio they were talking about like this is all bullshit. How, who are these people? Nobody's heard of these people. <laughs> and then and then they came out and they're like, oh by the way, we uh, we decided. We we didn't we had the statue for him, but since he wasn't there, uh, but Jim Norton was the co-winner for comedy, and then uh, so like I tweeted Jim like, hey, congratulations! I, I would have voted for you. Like you're a, a brilliant comic. I love yeah, what yeah. you do. I was like, you're. Uh, he didn't remember me, but I met him at the Friars Club years and years ago when he was out doing a show. And I was like, you, you were very nice to me when I was like, you know, a, a, an open micer, and a, and uh, you were very nice to me when I 
you know, told you I liked your work, you know, so uh, congratulations. You deserve this more than I do. And he's like, he's like, you know what? You won this. It's bullshit. Uh, <laughs> they gave it to you. He's like, they gave it to you. You're the winner. Don't let anybody say you're not the winner. He's like, I'm not a winner. You're the winner. That's what he told me. So that's funny. Yeah. I but, know he had some issues with Twitter because for a long time, his Twitter um, avatar was him barfing on the verified because they yes. wouldn't verify him. Yeah. Which actually infuriated me as a comic <laughs> because I would go on my timeline mm-hmm. and I would find <laughs> random porn stars with like 200 verified. followers verified. Yeah. And then yet Jim Norton isn't verified. And I know a couple other. When I got verified, I learned a lot about how the process works. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very good friends with Stephen Glickman who you probably know. uh, I do know Stephen Glickman. Yeah. So when he was on the TV show, big time rush, uh, I was, you know, doing, you open for him, right? Yeah. We go on the road a lot of stuff. You know, we hang out a lot. Um, I was actually in a pilot that he shot and I never found out what happened to it. (laughs) It's apparently gone. Do you know what I'm talking about? We shot it at the sizzler in like Calabasas or something or which one was it? Do you know what it was called? Nodder was in it. Uh, it wasn't the superhero one, was it? I don't remember. I was supposed to be... Because his... he did the one with Nodder where they were superheroes. I think I was playing his girlfriend. I really don't remember because it was so okay. long ago. Yeah, because I know he did a couple things with Nodder. I mean, this is like, you know, seven, eight years ago or something. Right? Yeah, it was yeah. a while ago. So, yeah, yeah, we shot a pilot together. Yeah, but I don't think that's going anywhere. After I, 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 I see I that. Think I, think <laughs> I think it's dead. <laughs> yeah. He's actually got something I can't talk about yet, but he's got a really cool deal that he just, uh, that he got, I'll, I'll tell you off. We're getting ADD. Okay, yeah. so, but anyways, you were, so uh, you were opening for him. and Yeah, and so like, you... I got contacted by another guy on Twitter who had a uh, verified account. And he's like, hey, I can uh, help you get, He's like, I, 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 he would mess with me every now and then because he was like a, a young actor and he was like, you know, in touch with like all these boy bands and stuff. So he knew of Steven's show. <laughs> okay. He's like, you know, some like 19 year old actor and he'd like send me a message every now and then. Like, cause we knew some of the same people, but I didn't know this guy. And he's like, hey, I know somebody at Twitter. He's like, I can help get Steven verified because he's on the show. And he's like, uh, and he's like, hey, why don't you give me your info too when I do it and I'll just throw it in with theirs. Wow. And then we'll see if we can get you verified too. And I was like, okay, sure. And then you, you had to send over, like your your full name, like a website where you show that like you're the actual that person has a link back to the Twitter account, and then information on like your management or agent or stuff like that. So I sent all of that stuff over for Stephen and for me, and then we both got verified. And then uh, I was able to go back and I was able to get a couple of the people on his show verified as well. Um, so why wouldn't they verify someone like Jim Norton? I mean, now Jim Norton is verified. Yeah. When that process happens, though, they it's not like Twitter has a bunch of people that are like, oh, this guy is famous, so let's verify him. <laughs> it's more like they get approached by PR agencies and people like that. So this guy I knew just happened to know somebody at Twitter that worked in that end of it. But normally what happens is like if, if you want to be verified and you're like pseudo famous, right? Like you've got a bunch of followers and you do something that's somewhat noteworthy, right? You're not just Joe Smith in your garage. You're yeah, yeah. Joe Smith who plays in a crappy garage band, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you hire a PR agent in Los Angeles who knows what they're doing, they can get you verified. It might cost you a lot of money because they're going to have to jump through a bunch of hoops and blow you up and make you look like you're bigger, a bigger yeah. deal than you are. But they can make that happen because that's how it usually happens with Twitter is a PR rep will go to Twitter and they'll say, hey, I have this client. They've got this many people that follow them. They're whatever, and they should be verified, and then boom, it happens. And what they used to do when they when Twitter first started, like – eight or nine years ago it used to be you could just send them an email being like hey can you verify my account and they would just do it back then but then all of a sudden twitter blew up became a thing and all of a sudden now you've got you know that was when they had like two hundred thousand people on twitter you know then all of a sudden they grew to like 10 million and they're like we're going to have a process in place for this where we're not going to just let people email us and now they're you know 500 million accounts or something the reason it it, it was just so curious to me i I mean i know jim is verified now because i follow him and and i'm a fan of his and also know him through mutual friends and he you know his picture for (laughs) speaking of stephen glickman this is find out this uh, is not a live podcast but for somehow stephen glickman (laughs) heard us talking about him and now he's calling He's calling me, but I, I'll, um, I'll talk to him later. Um, just because as a comedian, it infuriated me that, you know, he wasn't verified yet. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. There was like some porn girl that I somehow saw in my timeline because she was retweeted mm-hmm. by. Yeah. I don't know why I know so many porn people. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're thinking, I just found out there's somebody I knew. Uh, she w- She used to work at the Tilted Kilt. 
Okay, in, I know where that is. There's right? a comedy show. There, there was one that you, Mike Mortor used to run a comedy show at the Tilted Kilt up in Valencia yeah, or yeah. Oxnard or whatever, somewhere up there. It's right? a bar. <laughs> yeah, so we up there, and it's a bar where girls dress in like short kilts and yeah, like yeah, yeah. tied off shirts. It's like Hooters, basically, right? It's a knockoff. It's a Scottish themed Hooters, <laughs> is what it is. Yeah. So this one girl who worked there, and like she would be at the show. So like I saw her a couple times. So like, and I remember seeing her on. Uh, that uh, dating show, Excused, the one Eliza used to host. Yeah. Right? So I saw her on there like three times. Every single time she would start making out with the guy like first thing. Like she made out <laughs> with every guy on the show, right? It was, it was fun to watch. I'm like, okay, so I, I kind of know this person, not really. And then I was on Tinder the other day and, I, and like I see her picture. And it's like, yes, it's me, Deva Fox, the porn star or whatever. I'm like, wait, she does porn now? Like I, I didn't even know. I'm like, oh, okay, there's a porn star I know. I didn't know. I know a lot of porn stars through comedy ironically oh, yeah. comedy attracts porn there's people a lot for some of reason. porn stars that i know but anyway so i would so yeah. somehow some girl got retweeted that i was friends with another mm-hmm. porn star that retweeted her i'm not exaggerating when i say she had like 200 followers and she was verified mm-hmm. and I, meanwhile i'm following jim norton i'm following i i like three or four other comics i can't think of who were pretty big mm-hmm. comics yeah. and they weren't verified i was like okay this there's something wrong with this. okay rosie <laughs> You could just send a tweet to that porn star and ask a very simple question and find out. And that question is, who do I have to blow to get verified on Twitter? Because she knows. She knows the answer to that question. She does know. Yeah. Because um, that's, pr- in her case, that's, that's probably She did not good- hire a PR firm. It's probably a... The PR, I, now look, I don't know the anything. The PR firm is a hand job. Yeah. My theory is that might be a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. That was a quick mm-hmm. hour. Yeah, that was fast. That, that was, was very fast that, and very fun. Um, how can people find you? Tell us all of your information everywhere, even your <laughs> suck hate website. Okay. If you uh, just look for Funny Matt anywhere on the internet, Funny Matt on Twitter, Funny Matt on Facebook, Funny Matt on Instagram, Funny Matt on Vine, uh, FunnyMatt.com, that's always me. So if you find Funny Matt on the internet, that is me. Funny Matt on Reddit. There's no other Funny Matts? I have Funny Matt on every website. You have a monopoly. You like, as soon as a new service launches, I sign up for an account and get Funny Matt. And then I, like, <laughs> I have a Pinterest account that I don't use because, like, I heard about, I, I signed up for Ello, like that new crappy social media thing that was going to be big. And I'm like, just so I can get Funny Matt. Like, whatever it is, I get Funny Matt if it's possible to get that. You like, know, Google Plus, you can't do it because they don't let you do nicknames. You know who's brilliant? Adam Hunter has Comedian, I think. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. How did he get that? I don't know. Adam Hunter, and I think Steve Hofstetter has, like, comic or Comedian well, he's got or all something kinds else. Of, yeah, but... Uh, How did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, like if you're first on these things, like you make it. So I lucked out in that way. And the reason I started with that was because when I first uh, was going to build a website as a comic, I was like, oh, let me try to get mattwalker.com. But there are too many Matt Walkers. And the guy who had mattwalker.com was... Isn't there a Disney star that's a Matt Walker? Uh, well, there's a bunch of them. There's, uh, I think there's three verified Matt Walkers on Twitter. Because one of them is a guy who won a bunch of medals for Britain in the Paralympics. And there's another guy who's a drummer for the Smashing Pumpkins and Filter and Morrissey named Matt Walker. So there's several very oh, there's, Matt Walkers. There, I follow like 67 Matt Walker. I have a Matt Walker list on Twitter. There's like 65 <laughs> something Matt Walkers. But... Uh, I think there's three of us that are verified, at least. At least three verified Matt Walkers. Um, but so anyway, so so the the first Matt Walker I found was the guy at mattwalker.com was the webmaster for Vivid, for Vivid Video. Because it was just his resume of him. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I can't get mattwalker.com. What can I get? I'm like, let me get funnymat.com. And that's what I decided on in 2003. So I just stuck with that. And every time something new came out, I was... If you if you find my old MySpace profile, it's funny, Matt. Like everything's funny, Matt. See, you're lucky because you have a branding. Then mine is all random. Facebook, if it's different every single time, it's, it's yeah, harder to find. It's so yeah. on, on Facebook, I'm comedian funny. You know, comedian Rosie Tran. On yeah. Twitter, I'm funny Rosie because someone took Rosie Tran. Yeah. Are there a lot of Rosie Trans? Out there? there are a lot of Rosie Trans. A whole lot of Rosie Trans. <laughs> There's a lot of Rosie Trans. <laughs> But they're all like random. Nobody is in Just entertainment. Nobody. People, it's yeah. all random. And then there's another Rosie Tran who's a real estate agent in Canada. Mm-hmm. And I don't know this for a fact, but I think she's pissed that I have <laughs> rosietran.com. Oh, that's funny. And then she, for a while, had Ro- and then finally got rosie slash tran.com. And then mm-hmm. she's had other kind of weird yeah. battling social media with me. I'm making this up in my head. I'm not sure, but just from certain things. Maybe I she's think. upset. I think she's upset. Well, I, there's one thing <laughs> weird about Twitter. When you get verified, they actually offered to me. They were like, hey, uh, your username right now is Funny Matt. Do you want to have Matt Walker 
like at Matt Walker, we can just take it away from the guy who had it. Like they offer that when you get verified, they'll take it away from somebody <laughs> if you want it. And I was like, no, I don't. I, I'm like, no, everything's funny, Matt. Like my branding is funny, Matt. But if I wanted it, I could totally have taken it. I, I, I would want that just because the person who has at Rosie Tran doesn't use their Twitter account like at all. Yeah. And it's just like- It's an, dormant. It's, it's like dormant. Waste. And I'm like, no. It's a waste. Yeah. So go to Funny Matt uh, for anything. And then if you want to read what nice things people have to say about me, you can go to mattwalkersucks.com. And read all that now stuff. Now I want to go look at it. Not you to should. be it's mean, funny. but just to look. No, totally. It's um, fun. And then uh, if you want to watch my special, it's uh, available on Amazon Prime, so you can watch it for free if you have a Prime account. And is it Hater with the 8? H-8-R. Hater. Okay, eight. So just look up It's uh, the pun of hater. the no hate. hate. Yeah. It's a uh, Hater, because I'm a hater, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And so leave, guys, leave a comment. Leave give comments. How leave many comments. times do I tell yeah. you guys leave comments? If you hate Matt... Does a negative comment help you go up in the rankings? Totally. I don't care. Just send me whatever. Leave a comment. If you have a good review or a bad review, leave a review. I don't care. It doesn't matter, right? Because if they're bad reviews, I'll put the content on mattwalkersucks.com. It's, it's all good. <laughs> this thing, I, I've never been bothered when people don't like me. So, so if you do nothing, if you really, really hate Matt, don't do anything. Yeah, ignore me. That's how you hate me. And don't, do, don't ignore me. You and you can find him at Funny Matt across the board. And as always, when you go on out of the box podcast.com, we will have all the links available and we will put up a comedy clip or something so you guys can see how awesome and funny Matt is and see if you guys want to buy the special and support him. But what I want you to do right now is to go on our sponsor's website, hugmetees.com and buy a hug me tease. Guys, you will get so many hugs. I had on a hug me tease the other day mm-hmm. and I got hugged several times. Does the shirt just say hug me or what does it, it have says? On? I know you want to hug me. That's cool. And people will go up to you, they'll squint, look at your shirt, <laughs> and they'll try to read it, and they'll go, oh. And most people will hug you. So if you're a single guy and you want to get ladies, most I people, should maybe most look people into buying one of these things. will hug you. Um, although I <laughs> Don't have, wear it in West Hollywood. <laughs> I, have, I have, had, have, ha, have been wearing it and had people read it. And I was like, do you want a hug? And <laughs> a lot of people do say yes, but I have had people be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Get rejected for a hug. Yeah. So go on hugmetees.com. That sounds and- cool. I'm going go to be- go pick one of those up, yes, I think. Yes, and support our sponsor. Support Funny Matt and support this podcast by going mm-hmm. to Out of the Box Podcast on iTunes and leaving a positive comment. Guys, please leave a positive comment. I love the emails. I keep telling you guys I love the emails, but they do not help me at all. And I even had a gentleman send me a lovely email telling me how great the podcast was. And I said, okay, great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Please leave a positive comment instead. And I never heard back from the gentleman and I never (laughs) saw the positive comment. (laughs) So guys, I am not just doing this for my own health. Please leave comments. And if you want to support the podcast, Go on out of the box podcast.com. We're now accepting Litecoins and Bitcoins. So if you're one of those techie guys. Do you accept guys, doggy coins? We do accept doggy coins. We accept uh, I have doggy coins. all coins, all alternative <laughs> currency. We have our wallet set up. Click on the donate button and it helps keep the podcast going, keeping all the equipment running, paying um, my tech person and other things like that, keeping the website sur- supported. So that helps us out. And this has been Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. <laughs> <laughs>